Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a look at the new Transformers Studio Series 86, number 9, Rekgar. This new take on Rekgar features an all-new mold designed specifically to recreate his on-screen appearance from the Transformers the movie from 1986 and is a Voyager class toy, which is a first for the you know G1 version of the character. So there's a lot to be excited about here, right? A lot of people have been wanting a good, you know, G1 accurate Rekgar for a long time. And unfortunately, previous efforts really haven't lived up to that, you know, that hope or that standard. So now we finally get something that may do the trick. So if you see my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Rekgar's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll see Rekgar himself in both his vehicle and robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So Rekgar comes in your standard Voyager packaging for the Studio Series line. He is uh, wave mates with the non-86 movie character Thrust from the Bumblebee movie. So those two have released alongside each other, and I'll be reviewing Thrust shortly. And you can see he's no slouch as a Voyager. He takes up most of this packaging window, so that's a good thing. Definitely feel like you're getting money's worth here. Over here on the front and the side of it, you get some pretty nice artwork of Rekgar, which admittedly makes him look a little more sinister than it probably intends to. I think it's like the extra glow around the red eyes there, but no. Oh well. All right, and then you get renders for the toy in vehicle and robot modes. He takes 22 steps to transform, so not bad for a Voyager. Not super up there, but not super simple either. Here toward the bottom, they show off his little backdrop that's included, and it's called Junkion Dance Party, which is a bit misleading because there, there's no, like, dancing Junkions there. It's literally just the background of Junkion, so... They could have just called it Planet Junkion, I don't know. And what's pretty neat, and they've probably done this in the other 86 figures, and I'm just now kind of noticing it, but you see kind of a, a faded red imprint of that background behind the toy, which, I don't know, is that new or did I just never notice that before? Not sure. Uh, one thing I'm noticing just by looking at this render, it seems that his feet, like for his ankle tilt, they kind of split in half here. Do you see that? Where like the orange, like outer part of his feet with his toes, like separates from the upper part, which is a little bizarre looking to me. Seems like a very strange design choice there. And then, when we go ahead and turn it to this side, we get a much more zoomed out shot of Rekgar's render, looking like he's maniacally charging toward you. He still looks really evil. It just, it's probably not meant to look that way, but that's how it comes off to me. Here we get Rekgar's instructions. You can see he got his name, Transformers the movie logo, nice big render on the front, item number. Open this up. Quick little robot render, and then we just get straight into the transformation. Continues around over here until you get the motorcycle mode. And this last step shows you how to store his little pinwheel axe in the motorcycle mode. And then here, this shows you where to place his tires in the robot mode, how to have him wield his axe or store it on his back. And then you get a nice little cross cell for thrust here. So, you know, always good to advertise the wave mates. Get that money, Hasbro. Here we get our look at Rekgar's vehicle mode. You can see it's a big old motorcycle with him, you know, being a Voyager class. And it's relatively simple looking. Definitely harkens back to a G1 toy. Um, I don't know. It's probably not the strongest alt mode. I mean, you can like very clearly see his legs and his arms and stuff. But, I mean, it's going off an existing design, so that's what you're looking for if you want this toy, right? So overall, it's very sturdy. You can see, instead of like a single kickstand, it's got these panels that flip down from what are his, like, backs of his robot shins, so I guess his calves. Um, so two panels that flip down, so instead of him leaning like a normal motorcycle, it actually just kind of stands straight up. So that's pretty cool. So he's got his little spikes here on the front and back, and these are not detachable, by the way. They are permanently set in there, so don't don't try to pull them out. He's got these really cool wheels, which are pretty intricate in their design. They're very thick, they're very solid, they're not hollow in any way, which is awesome. And they're made up of a couple parts. There's this little gray like axle in there that this spins freely on. Now, unfortunately, this back wheel doesn't spin nearly as well. And I think it's a friction thing. I think it's kind of butting up against 
his legs a little bit, but even when I clear it, it this one just seems stiffer for some reason. It might just be my copy, but because of that, it doesn't roll well. You can get the front wheel to turn or you know to spin around while I while I move them, but the back wheel just kind of stays in place. It takes a lot of friction to move it. Plus, it doesn't help. He's got these like little you know bumps or spikes on the wheels, which reduces the amount of traction that it's got on the surface and the amount of friction. So, oh, I suppose dropping those might help. No, still no. <laughs> um, so yeah, because of these, this really doesn't get the purchase it needs to turn the wheel very well. Again, just my copy. Might not be on yours. Here we get the axe, and the instructions have you mount it kind of diagonally like that, which you can easily do. Personally, I kind of like to put it this way, just so it doesn't stick up as much and you know, stores away a little more, I don't know, seamlessly. Um, the whole windshield piece is its own bit of kibble, but you do have his robot head tucked up inside. Now, what's interesting about this is on the original Rekgar toy, the robot head was like the little canopy area of the motorcycle, which is why his head looks the way it does. Now, the only Rekgar toy that's ever actually done that is the original. It has a big old massive like ET looking head. So yeah, they decided not to go for that because they want him to have, you know, nice cartoon proportions. So what they did was actually pretty clever is that they still have his head kind of go inside of the canopy and it forms kind of a, a little dashboard here. So you can see it's got like some gauges here, probably a speedometer and I don't know, engine temperature. So it's pretty neat. And then they make what would be the handlebars on his head more like just regular horns. So they're a little less inconspicuous. And then you get the actual handlebars here, which move around for transformation. So overall, yeah, it's, it's a wonky looking robot mode, but at the same time it's supposed to be, right? The Junkions are patchwork robots. They're just kind of made out of whatever's, you know, whatever they can slap together. So it makes sense that he's not going to have a very sleek looking vehicle mode. So I can kind of forgive that. He also got these little cannons on the front here, which do articulate on ball joints and make for some interesting things going on with his chest here in the robot mode. Uh, so overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. You know, it's, it is very simplistic looking and for a Voyager, it is just really simple overall. But it looks nice. It does what it sets out to do, and that's recreate, you know, the veer, the uh, very awkward character of Rekgar from the movie. So overall, I dig it, despite its flaws. Here's a group shot with some of the other Rekgar toys that have been released. Over here, you get Combiner Wars Rekgar, who's just a new head retool of the Combiner Wars groove, and then you get uh, Power of the Primes Rekgar, who is also a new head retool of a combiner wars groove in this case the deluxe one so funny how that worked out right and then over here despite what you may think is not the reveal the shield retgar because sadly i don't own that but this is his mold mate which is basically the same toy but with a different head and that's junk heap so you know even though it's not retgar I mean, it's got the same exact vehicle mode so i figured it was worth comparison and for anyone wondering, yes, our new Rekgar can ride himself in vehicle mode. So if you have two copies of the toy, you can have one in robot mode, ride his vehicle mode. And you, you can actually see right here, there's this little notch, which you know, serves two purposes. One for transformation, it'll plug in here to hold his waist together in robot mode. But also, there's another slot, and you may not be able to see it very well. And I'll show it to you better in robot mode. But it's like underneath his pelvic area for him to plug on there and stay on. Now... Sorry if I get your hopes up, but I don't have another copy of this toy to show off that feature directly. I'm just sorry I'm not made of money. I couldn't really bring myself to buy two rec cars. Plus, we all but know, those of us that scour the forums, that we are getting a retool of this toy in the form of a generic junkie on, like down the line. So it'll be something much in the same vein as Scourge and the Sweep that, you know, are part of Studio Series. It's most likely just a new head retool, probably some different colors. So, you know, with the mold being the same, you'll be able to make them ride each other. And I will be sure to show that off when I do get the junkie on whenever that releases. But yeah, again, sorry to say, don't have two copies. So for now, you have to use your imagination a bit. Okay, and now it is time for our transformation to robot mode. So the first thing you wanna do, if you haven't already, go ahead and remove his ax and just set that aside for now. Then you're going to unplug his feet from his shoulders, like so. Kind of swing all this away. 
I'm going to separate his legs, thus detaching them from this wheel assembly. Now, I wouldn't pull on this part too hard because it can like pop off of the little gray axle piece it's on. So just kind of wriggle it free. It should come out pretty easily. Go ahead, just kind of straight his legs, close those if you haven't. Get his legs in just kind of a normal looking configuration. All right, then over here, you're gonna to wanna to pull the arms down a little bit because they're plugged into the bottom of his chest. And then again, wriggle them free of this wheel assembly. Set that aside. Gonna swing that out and swing his head and chest area down a bit. You want to uh, swing the chest like down against this flat bit here. And we can go ahead and fix his arms. So you just use these little tabs here to swing the hands out like so. Rotate them to where the spikes are facing outward. And then while we have all this nice and opened up, we're gonna take the windshield bit, swing it down inside and just push it in until it clicks into place. And this windshield will be folded and you know, compacted inside. All right, so we do all that and we kind of close up the pelvis area. So swing this hinge forward, swing all that down after you bring this up a bit, so it stays in. All right, now you wanna kind of collapse all this stuff down as far as it'll go. And the chest, you know, should be kind of flush with this little abdominal section. You do all that and then you bring this back assembly in and there are tabs on the shoulder panels to go into his chest. So make sure those are lined up okay. All right, there we go. Swing the handlebars down to get him out of the way. And then we just do our posing, get him ready to go. Fix his uh, gun nipples here. All right, and then just kind of get him doing whatever you need him to do here as far as his pose. All right, so this is our like very, very base robot mode. And then to complete the look, you're gonna take one of the wheels and you're gonna slide them over the spike on this side of his leg and push it in till the axle is plugged into a little port on the side of his knee. Do the same thing on this arm because he is very asymmetrical, right? It's all on this side. All right, so you get that going on. Now, for his weapon, you can do one of two things. Like the instructions showed us, you can place it on his back. And I would do it in kind of a diagonal position just to make it look cool, like you can unsheathe it. So that's something you can do for weapon storage. Or you can go ahead and just plug it directly into his hand, like so. And you get his little spinning pinwheel axe. That does spin quite freely, so that's good. It's not a little stiff or anything. And look at that. That's gorgeous, right? If that isn't Rekgar just jumping right off the screen, I don't know what it is. Like this looks better than a lot of, a lot of the uh, third party things I've seen. So of course we gotta get into articulation. The head is on a ball joint and it's like the perfect tolerance. Not too tight, not too loose, I love that. Got universal shoulders and it's got that whole like accordion like thing going on to fill in the armpit area, which is neat. I always like that. You got the bicep swivel, single bent elbows, wrist swivel, which I mean for a voider better. <laughs> uh, he's got a full, full waist swivel, which you can do all sorts of fun stuff with that, right? Just spin him around, tacking wildly. His little skirt flaps also lift up, which form kind of like the saddle bags of the robot mode, and just a really good look. Universal hips, which always helps that these little flaps can lift up. So you get that. Thigh swivel, single bend knees that go a little less than 90. And that really bizarre ankle tilt we were talking about where it kind of looks like part of his foot just comes off. I, I, I'm i not sure why they went with that. I mean, other than maybe necessity, because it looks weird. I'm not going to lie. It looks a little bizarre. Feet aren't supposed to do that. So that's maybe my one gripe. Just wish the ankle tilt was a little less weird looking. He also kind of, sort of, sort of, kind of has like some accidental ab crunch just because of his transformation, because this is not a very tight connection. So you can make him lean forward a little bit, though it's kind of cheating, you're kind of breaking his spine. 
but that is an option if you want it. And of course, we also talked about the uh, gun tassel things. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure the idea looked better in Flora Dairy's head. <laughs> it's it's a weird choice for sure. Okay, here is the backdrop that was advertised on the box, and again, it's called Junkie on Dance Party, which I think is just not a great name. I mean, they could have called it Planet uh, Planet Junkie on Planet of Junk. Jeez, I I don't like you know Junkie on Dance Party, especially because I mean, there's no dancing Junkie ons there anyway. I feel like a better name was in order. I mean, you got a ship like taken off and stuff. Also, admittedly. As much as I absolutely love the 86 Transformers movie, if there's any one thing I don't like about it, it's the Junkie on dance scene. It's just so out of left field and out of place with the tone of the movie. I, I could never get over that. Like, they were literally trying to kill the Autobots, like, moments prior, and then they were, like, dancing and kissing each other on the nose, and it's like, huh? <laughs> like... I always found it to be a really out of place scene. I know it's a fun scene, a lot of people like it. I mean, I mean, it's playing Dare to be Stupid by Weird Al, so that's always a plus. That's maybe the one good thing about that scene, but it just, I feel that the movie would have been better served and would be taken more seriously if not for the dance party scene. That's just my opinion. Don't at me. It's just, it's not my favorite thing in the world. All right, but enough talking about the backdrop. Let's go ahead and see how Rekgar looks standing on this thing. And I gotta say, he looks awesome. You know, it helps that he is, you know, a good-sized character being a Voyager, and he's actually, you know, pretty much Voyager size, or, you know, what passes for Voyager size in 2021. So he does have a very commanding presence here, right? He looks like he just, like, marched right up to you and introduced himself as the leader of the planet. So I think he looks really great. The background complements his colors so much. I dig it a lot. I know I said I couldn't give you a group shot of him riding himself, but I can kind of do it. <laughs> so this is our new Rekgar riding the Deluxe Class Combiner Wars one. Um, obviously, he's a bit big for it because he's a Voyager, it's a Deluxe, but it's the largest motorcycle mode you know, of a Rekgar that I have. So just to give you a general, general idea of what he looks like riding himself. I know it looks silly, but I'm doing the best I can. So, unless somebody happens to want to donate an extra Rekgar, in which case I will go out of my way to make just like a separate little quick clip video of him, you know, writing that. Uh, I'm just going to wait for the Junkie on to come out. 60 bucks is a lot of money to spend on two of the same toy. Here's another group shot with the robot modes for our other... Retgars and Junkions. Again, you get the Deluxe Power of the Primes Retgar, the Legends Class Combiner Wars Retgar, and then Generations Junk Heap as a stand-in for Reveal the Shield Retgar. And you can see that these are all very, very different takes on the character. However, the only one that really tries to faithfully recreate his original design is our new guy here. You know, not just as far as show accuracy, but he also comes the closest to, you know, how the original toy is supposed to look, too. Without, like, you know, the giant head. These two right here, um, they're not very popular choices for collectors because they do come off as more, like, afterthoughts. Like, the Legends guy, you know, he was a quick new head retool of the Legends groove just to kind of fill out a spot in the Combiner Wars toy line. But they didn't even make an attempt to, like, give him a team to be a part of. There was a strange call-out to Sky Rain's team on some of the packaging and stuff, but that feature was never actually utilized. There's not a way, or at least any official way, to connect this guy to Sky Rain, you know, to become part of the team, right? So he really is just a super afterthought. And then you get the Power of the Primes Rekgar, who was, you know, kind of a special release and exclusive. So his appeal really came in that exclusivity, right? He was something that was probably planned for Combiner Wars and then, you know, kind of got shelved, much like the Power of the Primes Inferno, and then got re-released later as a store exclusive. 
swapping out the Combiner War style hand for the Power of the Prime style, and additionally getting the pinwheel axe that actually came with the Reveal the Shield or Generations toy. So yeah, these two, just kind of quick, trademark refreshing cash grabs, right? Not very popular. This toy is pretty much useless, and this guy, he works as a combiner limb, and that's really about it. I mean, he's got a little tiny head because it has to fit inside this cavity here. Not a great representation. Then you get to the Reveal the Shield mold. Now this is a very popular mold. People really like it, except for the QC issues on, you know, some versions of it. Uh, but it was everyone's go-to Rekgar and, you know, other Junkions for the longest, longest time. Even though it takes a lot of liberties with the design, right? It's more in line with, like, the Classics figures, where they're reimaginings of the characters, not, you know, attempts at recreation of their old designs. And he does exceed at that. He has a very clever transformation. It's one thing I really like about this toy is it's just so unique and out there. The way, like, the front of the motorcycle and the seat of the motorcycle become, like, asymmetrical legs, and he's just got all the, the kibble on the side. It does actually work out there to where he has the two wheels on his left side, or, sorry, yeah, left side, like Rekgar's supposed to. So, I mean, it did the job pretty well, and it was just a really high-quality toy. Now, a lot of people still might swear by this, right? They might be happy with the uh, RTS Rekgar and not want to get this guy. However, if you are looking for something that, you know, for one is a good size and will scale well with your current collection and something that really actually resembles Rekgar's original overall design, both toy and, you know, movie and cartoon, this is really the big step up. This toy just does a phenomenal job of replicating that look and giving you something that reminds you of that 86 movie. So for me, he is easily a replacement for all these different molds right here. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to hold on to these for various reasons, right? I'm pretty much a completionist. Plus, I mean, Junkie here is a separate character anyway, so he'll look good in your nice little asymmetrical Junkie on army. But, like, I don't need, you know, this guy to be a Rekgar anymore. Like, he can just be a Combiner limb. Just be, you know, the hypothetical what if Rekgar was part of Combiner. But, like, I don't look at this robot mode anymore because it's just ugly. <laughs> it is really ugly. And then this useless guy, I mean, unless you just want to make him optional chest armor for Defensor or Victorion, he really doesn't serve a purpose, and he doesn't look anything like the actual Rekgar character. I mean, his colors are just way wrong. So, yeah, to me, this is the Rekgar that we needed, and I'm glad we finally got him. And this completes our look at the new Rekgar figure. Overall, I absolutely love this guy. I mean, I think he came out perfect. For, you know what they're trying to do trying to recreate that classic design i don't think they could have done better honestly not without going to like some masterpiece level budgeting um i really like him just everything about him the the modes the look of him the play pattern the fact that you know he can ride himself or any version of this mold i think all of that together just makes for an absolutely absolutely fantastic figure and now you know, the Studio Series 86 line, much like the greater Studio Series line, is very hit or miss, I think, when it comes to the figures that are released under that banner. Um, some of them, like this guy, are just absolute ass, absolute showstoppers, right? They're just good in every way. They really represent everything best about that character. And then some, like, you know, say Blur or Cup or, you know, like they're a bit disappointing and don't really carry that same level of impressiveness that something like this guy does. So I'm very happy to say that I think he is up there. He is easily one of the best 86 figures to come out of Studio Series. I mean, he just does everything right. So overall, I'm super happy with this guy. And I fully recommend anyone even remotely interested in the character picking this up because this is by far the best figure we've ever had of Rekgar. And, I mean, I say that with a lot of confidence, right? Because, I mean, to be fair, the bar is not super high. <laughs> like, aside from that Reveal the Shield figure, I don't know how many of the Rekgar figures are actually considered good toys. So, you know. But I, I think it's pretty agreeable universally that this is going to be the best take on him. Even if you don't want to, like, trade in your RTS one for it. So, I recommend picking him up. He's probably going to be really hard to find for a while because just like Scourge, he is a potential army builder. But 
unlike Scourge, we know much further ahead this time that there is indeed going to be a more army builder like release of this mold in the form of a you know generic Junkion. So personally, I would hold off buying a whole bunch of um, Rekgars, right? I mean, unless you just really are impatient or don't care, but I would hold off if you're looking for your army builders because they're coming down the pike. They'll work a lot better for this. And it'll help kind of free up the initial surge of people that are just gonna be buying up as many of these as humanly possible. I know it took me forever to find Scourge. Like I found Hot Rod very quickly, but his wave made Scourge, it took me a while. And I had to pay a little more than I wanted to because I gave him a Kroger, so it was like, can close like 40 bucks, honestly. So yeah, um, you know, good luck hunting him down. It might be difficult. Um, the internet's probably your friend in this case because you're probably not gonna see too many of them on shelves. So yeah, just, do what you can to track him down. I think you'll be very, very satisfied with this guy. He is just the perfect Rekgar toy, in my opinion. Of course, that is just my opinion. So now I'd love to know what you all think of Rekgar. Is my praise, you know, for this toy, is it well-deserved? Do you think he's as good as I say he is? Or do you disagree? Do you find some flaws with him that maybe I'm just not seeing? I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. If you'd like to become a member of the channel and join us for members only live streams and get to participate in our monthly Q&A video, uh, make sure to check out that join button down below where you can become a channel member for as little as $1.99 a month. I thank you all for joining me for this look at the brand new Transformer Studio Series 86 Voyager Class Rekgar. And with all that said, I will see you next time.